Welcome to Power Query video number three. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, now, this is Power Query video number three, but I didn't do a one and two. I actually renamed two of the Power Pivot videos. Now, I actually want to go over and look. So when you click on the link below the video, you get to this page. And you got to scroll down. This has got thousands of files. So I just want to scroll down and look at, here's the Power Pivot series with all the workbooks. And it was uh, video 11 and 12, which actually turned out to be number one and two for Power Query. There's the files. Now when you download this, there's an empty workbook with a few things. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to see how to take three text files and import them not in one, two, three steps, but all in one step. Now, the more I learn about Power Query, the more I am amazed. Maybe it's not Power Pivot or Pivot Tables that's the most amazing feature in Excel, but Power Query. Now, that's not really true, right? They all do their their own thing, but Power Query is profound in how it can import transform clean data and bring it into Excel or Power Query. Now we want to go back over to our workbook because I got to give some shout out to Bill Sizzes, Miguel Escobar, and Ken Pauls. These guys are helping me to learn Power Pivot. Here's the links you can go check out their stuff. Ken Pauls is a Excel MVP with tons of amazing things in his blog. Miguel Escobar has amazing power user videos. He's been doing power user videos at YouTube for a long time, much longer than me. And Bill, he doesn't usually post videos, but he puts amazing comments below my videos and is one of the smartest Excel guys I know. All right, so let's check out how to do this. Whoa, wait a second. I want to show you the end result because I want to build three pivot tables and build this report here. This is grade data. And we have three classes we're analyzing way back in time all the way to today. And we want to figure out the mean, standard deviation, and count. We're going to build three pivot tables. But I want to summarize this visually in one chart. So we have a slicer over here. We can click on any one year and instantly see how the data has changed. All right, let's go over and import our data. The first part of this is going to be Power Query. The second part will just be straight pivot tables and charting. Now, Power Query, you got to go and download this. Just Google Download Power Query. It works in 2010 and 13. Now, here's the amazing thing. From File. Oh, wait a second. From Folder. This is amazing. It will allow us to import easily text files all in one step. Now let's actually go look at our files to understand how this feature will interpret it in one step. This is just straight tab delimited records in rows. Each one of the files is like this. So the importing using from folder will just automatically know to slap all three tables together. In later videos, we'll see where if we are doing a different type of data import, either from text or from Excel files, it won't be as easy as a single step. Here we are, Power Query, From File, From Folder. Here's our Browse button. We go to wherever our folder is. And the final folder here, inside that folder, there's no more folders. There's only those three text files. I'm going to click OK. Click OK. Wow, check that out. It actually brought information and attributes about the actual files, but it's this binary one that has all the data. Now, we're going to delete all these, so watch this. I'm going to right click and say Remove Other Columns. Now I can simply, actually, let's rename this before we do anything else. All Grade Data tab, and check that out, that little arrow, arrow. Let's click and instantly. Bloop, there is our data set. Now, we imported these from text files, and it interpreted the first row as header or field names. That won't always happen. 
But there's another thing is that when we imported these down below, and these are huge data sets, these field names can show up. So I want to click on the filter. And this is an amazing feature of filter everywhere. Filter, pivot tables, power pivot, power query. It gives you a unique list of items that you can check. But check this out. List may be incomplete. I'm going to try and load more. And there it is. There's that field name way down there somewhere. Now, you can run, you can prove this to yourself, run a little teeny data set. And then you can look through and see that, in fact, the field names often do show up. But I'm going to uncheck this. This becomes part of the query. So I'm going to click OK. You can see there's a bunch of steps over here of our query. All right, now our data is good to go. We can actually come over and look at each one of these, right? List may be incomplete. And we can see that no way. Look, there's all of our numbers. We could also come over to year and select list may be incomplete. I'm going to load more. And sure enough, there's all the years. Click OK. Now we can simply close and load to. We are definitely going to load it to a table in Excel. If you wanted to load it to your data model, there it is. I'm going to put it on the existing sheet. Click the Collapse button, A1. Click OK. Click Load. You've got to be kidding me. That is absolutely amazing. Control down arrow, there's our 75,000 rows of gray data for these three classes. Control Home. Now we're going to build a pivot table on this other sheet. Insert pivot table, or we're going to use the keyboard Alt N V. Since we're putting on a new sheet, I'm simply going to hit Enter. Here's our field list, class down to rows, grade down to values. Here's our first pivot table. I'm going to close this field list. We don't need it anymore. Right click, and I'm going to the one stop shopping for pivot tables value field settings. I want to change the name. Actually, I want to change the at the calculation first. Now we're going to change this to GPA. And we want to add some number format. I want to show just to one decimal. Number, decimal, click OK. So one, two, three, our one-stop shopping. We change three things, click OK. Now let's go ahead and go to Analyze, Insert Slicer, Year, click OK. And we could format this if we want. Four columns right to the edge, however you want to do it. Now I'm going to come over here, and I'm not going to change the row labels, because we're not going to really look at this or, or print it out. We're just going to make a chart. But watch this. I'm going to Control Asterisk to highlight the whole table, Control C, Control V. Now I want to right click, One Stop Shopping. And we want to change it to standard deviation of the sample, number formatting. We're going to actually put a bunch of decimals here. I'm going to include four decimals. Click OK. Now I'm going to come up here and name this SD. OK. Control asterisk to highlight the whole table. Control C, Control V. Click inside the values, right click value field settings, and now we want Count. We want to count the numbers. We'll change the name, and now we'll do number formatting. I'm just going to include 0. Click OK. Click OK. So now we have our three pivot tables. And now we can already see that it's working. You know what? I'm going to change right here. Right click. And since I don't need to one stop shop, I'm going to go to number formatting and increase it to two decimals. Click OK. Now let's create our chart. And the tricky thing is actually going to be um, the, the, the label that we want on the top. But we'll see a cool Excel trick. I'm going to use the keyboard for the default chart, Alt F1. My default chart is a column chart. Hey, that's looking pretty good already. I'm going to click up here. No, actually, I just had a an idea. I want to actually come back over here to the pivot table, right click, show field list. I want to drag year to the filter, which is basically this similar to 
the slicer. The slicer is just a fancy visual way. I'm going to close this. But the reason why I want that there is because I want to make a label up here. And I'm going to do a few different labels for this chart where the labels are going to be based on formulas from the cell. So I'm going to say label colon. And our formula will be equals student data in space at the end, double quotes, and join it. Now, if I just click on this cell, it'll give me the get pivot table data. And I'm just going to type B1. All right, you ready? So when I change the year over here, my label changes. So now I'm going to click on the title, either click up on the equal sign or type equals, and click on F1. So there we have student data in. 1980. Now, the tricky thing is I'd like to pull the data 1, 2, 3 from three different pivot tables. And I want to link these data labels to the actual cells. And that's an awesome new feature in 2013. All right, so I'm going to type data label 1. I like to label everything so I know exactly what's there. And I'm actually going to color these green. These are not really part of our anything we're going to print out. I like to indicate that this is a formula with some color just so I don't make a mistake later, right? Now, I know that changes the chart. We'll, we'll mess with the chart later. But let's make our data labels, because I want 1, 2, 3. I want the GPA, the standard deviation, and the count. So GPA equals with the space at the end, and I'm going to click in. Now, I'm not going to click on B4. I, I want to type B4 because it'll give me that get pivot table data function. I don't want that. Now, I'd like to have all three here. And in order to show it up nicely in the chart, I actually need to put a hard return in my formula. See, I want 1, 2, 3 listed vertically on top of the column. So I'm actually going to use the character function character. Hey, we know our ASCII characters. There's 255 of them. And 10 is actually a hard return. You've got to be kidding me. Now, let's join the rest of it. Now, here's the rest of it. Standard deviation equals B10. That's actually in the uh, second pivot table. And then character, 10, and count equals. And we're looking down at the third pivot table. Now, we're going to run into a problem with number formatting, Control Enter. Formulas cannot see that number formatting, so I have to hit F2. And we're going to put the text function. The text function will convert a number to a text string given a custom number formatting. In double quote 0, 0.00, that'll show two decimals. End double quote, close parentheses. We'll have to do the same over here. So I did the same thing here. I'm showing three decimals because I want a little bit more on the standard deviation. We don't have to add text because that is a whole number. Let's see what this looks like. Control Enter. Oh, that's looking great. Now, we could go ahead and add word wrap to see that it's working here. But we don't need to Control Z because the formula that will connect these labels to there will understand that character function. We'll copy this down. Now, let's go to our chart data labels. I click once, Control-1 to open up the task pane. And we're going to uncheck values, which will remove them. And now we're going to do values from cell. Absolutely amazing. Here's our data label range. We simply highlight, click OK. Now, that sort of looks like it's working there. I do want to do something to indicate that GPA is actually the column, and SD, standard deviation, and count are different. I'm actually going to come up to our formula F2, and I'm going to do something totally crazy. I'm going to actually add another hard return. So copy, Control V. So there's two characters, Control Enter, and double click and send it down. All right, so we could do this various ways, but GPA is actually the column. This is extra data. Wow, check that out. Let's go ahead and close this. And guess what? We don't need the pivot tables or our formulas. I'm going to click on the edge of the chart to lodge this up in the corner. Now let's get our slicer. And you got to be kidding me. Look at that. 
absolutely amazing hey so in this video we did some fancy charting some fancy labeling with formulas there's some pivot tables under this chart a slicer we even started back over here using that amazing power query from file from folder all right we'll see you next trick